right, ladies, saddle up. She's a woman, but she still manages to make that sound like an insult. Okay, let's be honest with ourselves. Movie adaptations of video games have typically been pretty awful. So when I heard there was a live action Monster Hunter movie coming to the big screen, I was skeptical to say the least. Monster Hunter is a gaming franchise that I will always hold near and dear to my heart. I played a good handful of games in the series, but none have matched my affinity for Monster Hunter Free Unite on the PSP. I've spent almost 2,000 hours on just that game. I've always considered it probably one of my favorite video games of all time, and it's easily the most time I've ever spent into a game. Every weekend, me and one of my best friends I would consider like a brother to me would go over to either his house or mine to just play Monster Hunter together all weekend, from sun up to sundown, only taking breaks to eat or sleep, and we did this for years, even playing solo to grind further to completing the game. We had to be the G-ranked Hunters of Legends. I mean, I soloed Ukenloose, which is something I still consider one of my greatest gaming achievements in my life. The thing I love so much about Monster Hunter is the grind to power, something I normally hate in other games, but in this series it's so well balanced that it's not only challenging, but it's rewarding to grow without feeling impossible. Every time you kill that giant monster, it feels like a true feat. The amount of adrenaline I would get from that objective clear cutscene with the triumphant music after a long onslaught battle has been unmatched in any other game. The core gameplay of Monster Hunter is you start off small and build up to legendary monsters that are truly intimidating. You craft or upgrade new armor and weapons by collecting items or killing monsters to hopefully get the item that you need for that awesome new sword or armor set to help you advance further into the game. The stories to the game are pretty much always there's some big monster terrorizing something and you need to kill it when you're ready. It's simple because the main focus of these games is solely on the gameplay. The thrill of tracking down that monster. All right, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up, Pigeon? Uh, we're doing pretty good. How are you doing? Uh, my weekend was kind of crazy. I'll get over that later. Um, but what's up, Ragamuffin? Hello, hello. Uh, first off, I do want to say thank you to David Royale Saitama for renewing their membership. So for two months. So super appreciate that. And this deck list comes from them. And I am super excited about this list because it does a lot of interesting things to say the least what is going on here well we are big bad red we are some spicy cinnamon gum or uh delicious cherry cream soda <laughs> so i'll find thanks that's good uh so what do we got going on here let's just get over the mana base four dark steel citadels four slagwood bridges two uh, of our eight indestructible lands we also have four great furnaces and six Mountains to round out our 18 lands. Now, why do we have the indestructible lands? Well, because we're running a full play set of Cleansing Wildfire. Destroy target land. Its controller may search their library for a basic land card put on battlefield, tapped and shuffle. I played this card a bajillion times. I love this card. Doing fine here, too. Just chilling with some magic. Awesome. Good, good, good. Uh, this can also take out our opponent's lands, which is relevant, but also ramps us. So, pretty good. Uh, and it's also a draw card. We also have four Gal Blasts because we are, are running Great Furnaces, Slagwood Bridge, excuse me, and other artifacts. We also are running four Lightning Bolts for Reach or like our interactive pieces. Then we're going to get into our Mana Rocks. We have four Mind Stones, which is a two drop. Tap it for uh, add a colorless mana, but also you can tap one and tap it to sacrifice it to draw a card. So we could... You know, if we draw this, we have plenty of mana. We can just cycle it, basically. We have two network terminals, which is a three drop that taps to add one mana of any color. You can tap it and one other mana to tap another untapped artifact you control. Draw a card, then discard a card. So we can kind of loot and scoot around with this. So that's kind of cool. Let's do this exactly. And then four pristine talismans, which is just a three drop. Tap it to add one colorless to your mana pool, but you gain a life every time you tap it. So kind of just like a little nice onboard gain one life a turn kind of card. Uh, but it also helps our ramping abilities. We also have two fiery cannonades to deal with the early game. Saha dude, what's up bull? Uh, two Geomancers Gambit just for extra cleansing wildfire effects. 
We also have four Crimson Fleet Commodores, which is a 5-2 that gives us a Monarch and has Trample. Then we have probably the most interesting card that I'm excited about is Avarax. This is our big payoff card. This is a 3-3 for 5 that has the same ability as uh, Squadron Hawk, but it has Haste. Haste, when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for another Avarax, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. But the, here's the interesting thing is, you can spend two mana to pump this thing infinitely at instant speed. So for two mana, it becomes a 1-0. You have multiple of these things with haste. Piles on pretty quick. Then we have Gal Blast and Lightning Bolt for reach. We also have Boarding Party as a 4 of. This is just a 6-3 haster with Cascade. And then to round it off, we have the Elephant, the Elephant, Oliphant, which is a 6-4, four, 4-6 four, that we can mountain cycle to get some of our mountains out of our deck if we need to. And whenever it attacks, another target creature you control gets plus two, plus zero. Uh, and trample to end a turn. So Avarax, we can pump, give it haste with Oliphant. Oliphant. I don't know how to say that. Oliphant. Oliphant. I don't know. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is, it can also give Boarding Party trample too. It's just a big creature. And that's our main deck. We're mainly just playing a bunch of ramp into big stuff and that's 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 our game plan here so i'm pretty excited about this this seems like it's gonna be pretty fun sideboard wise we just have a nice little assortment of good things we have four red elemental blasts for blue we have four cast into fires for uh you know little creature decks and artifact decks we have stone rain to blow up lands that are relevant and then we have three relics of progenitus to deal with graveyard so pretty simple like sideboard we're on a pretty simple game plan, so I am pretty excited. So let's get into this. Um, I wanted to stream this Friday, but uh, my weekend kicked off. My Friday, I had work Friday, so it's not really my weekend, but Friday kicked off uh, with some pretty obnoxious stuff going on in the morning that I kind of had to deal with all day. Um, <clears throat> so... Not to go into too grave of detail, but we uh, we went and got a new car this weekend. Uh, we went and got a new car this weekend, and uh, hold on, I'm gonna keep this. Why not? We don't really have anything to do till turn three, but we can ramp a little bit. Um, but yeah, so we wanted to get a new car this weekend. And I've had fraud pop up on my account in the past. So all my credit stuff is frozen. So I needed to unfreeze all my shit for it to work, right? So what's up, David? How's it going? Uh, so I put in to unfreeze it. Well, then I got a weird email for one of my credit cards that information had been updated. And I didn't update any information. Then I went in there and the information that was supposedly updated has not been changed. So I, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. So I called them and what had happened was they pulled a number from my credit, uh, cause they needed a phone number. I guess there wasn't a phone number. So the number that was pulled was not mine. So then I had to figure out what credit what line of credit that supposed thing was on. And yeah, so it's it was a whole ordeal. So I then I got logged, locked, not locked out. I forgot to activate Talisman because I'm in story mode now. Do I want to Avarax here? Or do I just want to play Pristine Talisman into Mindstone and then start Boarding Party? I'm just going to play... I'm going to play Talisman into Mindstone and just pass. Um, so yeah, so then I, I could not get logged in to Experian to save my life. I still can't. I don't know what the deal is with their system, but still can't. What's up, Lotus? Uh, sounds like a, quite an ordeal. Yeah, I was basically on the phone calling the credit bureaus, calling my credit card, calling my bank. Because that was another thing, was I got a notice from my bank and email 
that it said security alert statement available. And I've gotten, I get bank statements, but like I've never gotten to where it said security alert before. So I'm like, what the fuck is happening? So I called, uh, yeah, and I couldn't get logged into Experian. So I was on the phone on and off with them. So I was basically on the phone with banks and creditors from like, I don't know, like fucking <laughs> from like 830 in the morning to like, I forgot to tap that talisman again from like 830 in the morning to like, I don't know. It was like close to noon by the time I got stuff mostly sorted, but it was obnoxious. Yeah, it was super obnoxious. So that was quite the ordeal. Good news is we got the car. So that's cool. And I believe all my credit stuff is frozen back. My bank account still look clean. So I just don't know what the whole ordeal is. But I, when I talked to Experian, they kept saying that there was some kind of maintenance glitch. And apparently it's still not fixed. So don't know what the... Don't know what was going on there. Fraud sucks. It does, bull. It does. It's weird. I have the last name. My last name is Smith. So I am a prime suspect. Not a prime suspect. A prime target for it. Which is super obnoxious, to say the least. Congrats on the car, though. Thank you. We got a 2023 Kia Soul. I love it. I think it's awesome. We traded my truck in for it. That's what I had to do. Freeze my three credit reports. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I got to work one day. And what do I want to do with this lightning bolt? Do I want to send it to their face? Mm. Hold on. Kill core? Yeah, Skyfish is probably you're probably right, piano. It's definitely probably the more annoying card. Oh hello there. Um one, two, five. Avarax V two. Fetch up Avarax V3. Attack with 1 and 2. That top deck? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, there's also greater consumption protection with credit cards as compared to debit cards. Prefer to pay with credit and pay the balance each month. Yep. You're 100% right there, Lotus. You're 100% right on that one. I wish we could have been able to play this fiery cannonade, but man, you go monarch plus uh, fiery cannonade. Yeah, that's probably what I'll do this next turn if I get another land. I guess it's four, isn't it? I keep thinking of Crim Crimson Cli Crimson Fleet. I keep thinking that it's a five drop like uh, the Avrax is. Fave credit card I have is Amex, not even close. Yeah, where I live though, not a lot of places take American Express. This uh Discover and Visa are the for my area where I live personally are the better choices. And Gam Blast, you say? Well three, four. Let's play the Crimson Free Commodore. Become the Monarch. Fiery Cannonade you now. Attack you for six. I don't think they have anything with haste. 
Um, but yeah, so that was that was a whole ordeal this weekend. That's why I didn't stream Friday. So I missed the start. What's the goal of your deck today? Mana ramp into basically Avrax. Avrax is our big payoff card. And we're also playing like um, you know, Crimson Fleet Commodore boarding party. We're playing just big red cards, and we're also playing the elephant and the elephant, so Olafont. So that's kind of what the whole plan is. Is to go that route. Just kind of mana ramp into big stuff and then beat down our opponent really quickly. And it's what we're trying to do. But also, what's up, Joel? Sweet, thanks for the info. The info on what? I like what the deck's doing, I guess. What a beautiful moment. Yes, it was pretty good. Um, This matchup, probably just cast into fire. I don't think we have anything else we care that much about. I like Fiery Cannonade. I honestly think we can probably just go down the Geomancer's Gambit here. And just leave in our other Mana Dorks. Uh, I like Mind Stone because it draws, but the Looter Scooter also draws. So let's go down just two Mind Stones. Run it like that. But yeah, so it was it was it was quite the ordeal this uh this past weekend, that's for sure. But <clears throat> everything seems to be okay, and we got the car, so. And then my fat ass got canes, too. Got raising canes, so. <laughs> Would cut the monarch because of... Oh, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point, David. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to bottom probably boarding party. We can cycle the Oliphant. It's our least impactful card right now. So, yeah. I'm addicted to Lord of the Rings draft. I've never drafted the set. It's a pretty good piano. I love having two of the deck because it sideboards so clean. I mean, yeah, that's probably true. <clears throat> I'm just going to go Mountain and then leave up Oliphant for cycle. If we want to, Dame Levi, you look like Ragnar today. Thank you. I got, I was another thing. I got all cleaned this weekend. I got my sides shaved down and beard trimmed up a little bit. Thank you, Lotus. I appreciate that, buddy. Time to blood eagle the opponent. <laughs> it is great, but it takes a little while to yield. <clears throat> yeah, I, like I said, this set seems awesome, so it makes sense. I think I'm just going to cycle the Elephant here. If anybody doesn't know what Elephant and the Elephant is, I'll tell you in a second. I'm probably going to... <coughs> excuse me. I'm probably just going to cast in a fire this Agent Den. Because <clears throat> um, why not? Is that up, dudes? No, this is David Royale's list. Do you play Magic on paper as well or just Moto? Uh, mostly just paper. I mean, mostly just Moto. But I do play a little bit in paper. I'm going to a paper tournament in August at uh, Apex Gaming. So I'll be playing in the Apex Modern like 5K they're doing. And I will also be doing their Pioneer tournament. <clears throat> oh, Piano. Piano is up, dudes. Oh, that's what's up. I didn't know that. I know Lotus covered one of your decks recently. Another elephant. I think I'm just going to network terminal here. We can cycle this other elephant for another... <clears throat> for another land, and then we can go cr maybe Crimson Fleet Commodore into Lightning Bolt. I don't know. Yes, he did. A great video on gardens. He makes great content. Lotus makes great content. But in terms of, yeah, paper. So I'm doing those two tournaments. That's coming up. Uh, outside of that, I pretty much um, play mainly on Moto. I do play, like, Kitchen. I don't play... Uh, that's annoying. I don't really play, like... And paper, like I don't go to store and play 
hardly anymore at all. It's not because like I don't really want to. There's just no local places that really fire off. And I work nights, so that also tampers with weekday stuff. There's nothing through the weekend. There's nothing through the weekend that plays, so... Yeah, I mainly just play in paper, but like I said, I'll be going to that Apex Gaming tournament in Codwell, Ohio, August 12th and 13th. So I'm looking forward to that. I think that's going to be really fun. Bolt the Bird. Oh, I probably will, especially if they don't play a creature here. Because if they play, like... Let's say they go, like, uh, Core Skyfisher... A Thravian Inspector, sure. <clears throat> and then Acre Wellspring, sure. So I'm going to actually probably just Gal Blast the bird because I don't have this turned on quite yet. And then I'm going to try to just get the Monarchy, I guess. Start drawing some cards. Land. My best friend lives in Springfield, Ohio. How close is that? To Codwell? I'm not sure. Not 100% sure. I like this list. I like it a lot too. I'm a big fan of it as well. I don't think so, friendo. Yeah, I'm not sure how close uh, Springfield is to Codwell. Let me look real quick. According to Google, it is two hours and 16 minutes away. Oh, Springfield's over by Dayton. See, Codwell's over by like Cambridge and Zanesville. Um... Go ahead and kill that thing now. <laughs> we Now we need Avarax. That is true, Piano. Should I call you Piano or Ups, dudes? I wish I would have paid attention and not had the yield set there. Because we could have got rid of this cast into fire. Now the problem is if we don't draw another artifact, we can't keep the monarchy next turn. They just had another Rust Bell Bridge anyway. It's gonna do this now, because why not? Alright. We've kept the monarchy for a while. There he is. There's the big boy. Could have exiled the spring. Yeah, could have. <laughs> Definitely could have. Go, go, Squadron Hawk. I know, right? Go, go, Power Range. Oh, no! My Talisman. I didn't even activate it. Go, go, Avarex. We get another one. Yes, peas. Avarex. I'm just going to attack. It's going to attack because we have another Crimson Fleet Commodore to steal back the Monarchy, but we should probably just jack the Monarchy out of the deck. David's right about that. For some reason, I didn't make the connection that <laughs> Crimson, Fleet, Crimson, Fleet, Crimson Fleet Commodore gives you the, the Monarchy. We can definitely just keep stealing it back and forth. But yeah, so <clears throat> I like this list a lot. This list is sweet. I just like Avarax. The card's awesome. Like the artwork's cool. It's a cool effect. It's good. He be bouncing. All right, well, they're jacking my monarchy here. 
I'll probably just Avarax again. Like, if we can, like, steal back the monarchy with just Avarax, I'll probably just Avarax. I don't know. Nah, probably just Crimson Fleet Commodore, actually. It's probably, uh, probably just Boarding Party. Just attack. Do I want a Crimson Fleet Commodore, or do I just want to go Boarding Party attack? Play, play uh, Crimson afterwards? Yeah, probably. Let's make them interact with his Avarax first. And we just keep getting the monarchy back from us. Yep. He can blow all with... True. The Commodore is back. I'm partying. <laughs> my baby, my boy, my pride, my possession. You're going to gal blast it too? You son of a gun. All right. Synthesizer gets a mountain. I have a lot of ways to kill this little dork. We just need to find him. I'm just going boarding party here. We get to kill their Kark Clan Shaman before they get to use it, so like that's cool, I guess. I don't know why they did it that way. What are the chances this connects? Like 0%? Right? They have six cards in hand. It's got to be like 0%, right? Oh shit, it connected. <laughs> Let's go. The monarchy is mine once again. <laughs> Top deck like a champion. <laughs> That's what we try to do here. The Sound of Music, how do you solve a problem like Maria, Fiery Cannonade? <laughs> nah, Journey to Nowhere. Rude. I would have partied before to force the blow up, then follow up with Crimson Fleet. Yeah, maybe. It 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 ended up working out. It ended up working out. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if we top deck a land, we can Aparax and like crim cleansing wild cleansing wildfire. Which would be cool. I see Updo's line though. Yeah, I mean both of them are solid lines. For sure. Okay, cool. Well, that makes this choice a little bit easier. Let's look up Avarax V. Is this a three? No. Yeah, it is V3. Good time. Oh, quick killing our shit. Good times. This list reminds me of a deck I used to play during Guilds of Ragnarca Standard. It's really fun. I like it a lot. Do you have Boros decks you like to play in paper and popper? Uh, the Boros decks I like. I, I like Boros Synth, Boros Bully a lot. Um, Old Raging Bull has a really cool Naya Wonderbread list that splashes green for like one card that I really enjoyed. It's very much a Boros Synth deck with Carpace Forger. I streamed a couple of days ago, like I think it was last week or the week before, that I really enjoyed. Um, so they're out there for sure. 
I love Avrax, just like Throngs and Hawk. Yep. I like it a lot, too. Insane card advantage. Feels like it. They need a two-mana mana artifact, which draws a card in a battlefield and taps for colorless called Gas Pedal. That'd be funny. This deck is sort of nice with Mortuary Mire. It could be. Getting tired of our opponent doing shit, though. Huh. The question here is, what do we want to do? Cannonades would be good now. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> I would like a cannonade. We could Avarax blow up this token with Gal Blast. Doubt they chump. Because they're probably going to want to steal the monarchy. We could play the elephant and hope that they don't have a Gal Blast to deal with the elephant or a journey to nowhere. I think if you play the Avrax, you don't attack. That's why I think two. Let's play Avrax and pass. Play the Avrax, hold up the Gal Blast. Yeah. I think you're probably right. They only have two cards in hand. But my my luck is it's Lightning Bolt or Gal Blast. Or Journey to Nowhere. Uh, We have to ditch a card. Just gonna ditch one of these mind stones. Who's the beat down assignment of the roll? Avarax. <laughs> right now it's nothing, but let's see how they scry here. I think they've scryed to the top every time they've played Limboss this game. Yep, <laughs> scry to the top. I like your channel. I like your play and your commentary. Good job, friend. Thank you, Joel. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. They find a journey to nowhere. Come on. It's like you only have two cards in hand. Get out of here. Quit doing stuff. <laughs> okay. Well, this makes our blocks a lot worse, but what's up, Torvis? How's deck performing? We're we're in game one, match two. Is currently what we're at. Um, I probably should have blocked first. I was inspired by your mono green Tron list and bought it myself. Hopefully it does well in my LGS. Hopefully, Alex. I really hope so. I love that monster that monster Tron deck, the mono green Tron deck. I'm a huge fan of it. So hopefully it does well for you. It's been it's done really well for me. So I'm hoping that it does well for you too, my friend. I love that. I love that deck. That's one of my favorite popper decks, the mono green Tron. All right. Boarding party. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, I mean, six. Cascade into a creature. It's not going to be Avarax. Pristine Talisman, I'll take. Sure. Big bad Tron Red. Yeah, right? Uh, what if instead of Wildfire, I use Tron Lands? Interesting. You could, 100%. You'd lose the draw power, though, from Wildfire. I guess that's the question, is like, is the Wildfire... I don't know. But you could. Place a, replace a lot of the mana rocks with other pieces. Yeah, you could. That'd be interesting. Dave, if you get a list uh, drummed up, let me know. I'm debating if I want to play Cleansing Wildfire here or not.
think I'm going to just to draw another card and to thin our deck a little bit. Play it. I would wildfire. That's what I'm trying to do. Oh, they got us with the cast into flames. Womp womp. Rude opponent. So rude, I would do the same thing. So rude. The deck is mana hungry. Yeah, for sure, but I feel like we have plenty of mana. But, I mean, yeah, you could. Like, I definitely see Tron, because Tron and a couple of, uh, like, network terminals and a couple of, like, mountains, then, boom, Avarax is huge really quick. So, like, yeah, I get it. God damn, they're on, like, the straight-up hate-me route right now, ain't they? Ulamog? Yeah, right. Why couldn't Ulamog Ceaseless Hunger get a downshift? Come on, let's go, common baby. Are there any Tron decks that are tier one? I don't think there's really any Tron decks that are currently tier one. Maybe Alter Tron would be considered tier one at this point. That'd be my guess. Just Alter Tron. Let's top deck a Fiery Cannonade. Yeah, that'd be my guess. It's just that. Cool. Ask and you shall receive, my friends. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, uh, we're just one shy. We could play the other Crimson Fleet Commodore, though. I think we do. One, two, three, four. I'm just going to play the Crimson Fleet Commodore, blow up their board here. They have their top deck mode right now. We have the Monarchy, and we're going to clean their board off. And we have Haster in hand that can fetch up one more Haster. So, yeah. But yeah, I would say probably Ultratron is tier one. What do you have now? Okay, Cracking Limb Boss. I was like, what do you even have? to do uh ultratron was tier one until cast into fire now it's a strong tier two yeah you just don't see ultratron a lot in magic online because how taking how click in, in, intensive it is come on brain let's get there you just don't see it very long very much on magic online but in paper i've heard it's pretty pretty good so <sighs> this game's not ever gonna end I think Ultratron is not tier one due to vulnerability to artifact hate and Ponza. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's really a tier one Tron deck. I personally really, really like. Um, I'm a huge fan of. I'm a huge fan of the Mono Green Tron. All right. Well, let's play the elephant. One, two, three, four, five. And we can play the Mind Stone, so let's just play Mind Stone too. We can play Mind Stone because we can crack it next turn. What's the record? We're in the first game, Pascal. Leave red. Yeah, we probably should have left red, right? In case we top deck like a bolt or something. Boros, we've had the monarchy the entire game. This Boros synth deck has less cards than we do in deck. <laughs> but yeah, we're we're still in game one. This is match two. I mean, match one, game two. We we won game one, but we're on a really grindy game two here. Oh come on! Our opponent just won't stop doing stuff. Another limb boss? Seriously? Zero cards, a top deck, and they can draw three cards this turn. They bought him that one. This is going to be a lot of pressure, though, this turn. So, 
One, two, three, four, five. Hold on. They are forced to block true. Hey, as a heads up, I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't, did some testing in the Merkwood Bats deck and took out four petals and replaced them with two swamps and two mountains. The deck makes so many treasures you don't need duels. Oh, nice. Um, also, Moist, did you see the new card that got announced? Uh, that is basically is that the last one. Yeah, it is. That's basically another copy of Merkwood Bats. It's like, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like a three drop two two or something. Um, let's hope their last card isn't a fucking lightning bolt. Really? Okay, they're cracking the limb boss. Not quite lethal, but it's a lot. But yeah, moist that, uh, that new card that's in the new set is basically like another Merkwood bat, so that's going to be pretty interesting, I think, for the deck. I thought it was Lightning Helix. Yeah, that'd be annoying, too. I didn't think about that. They kept their Glenhawk. I was like, let it be Galblast, just so we can end this game. <laughs> They're going to steal the monarchy from us. We're running out of stuff, though. Like, what do we even have in deck? We're out of the Avaraxes. We have one more elephant. One more Crimson Fleet. And I guess we have three boarding parties still in the deck. Well, that's annoying. Tried a bit of bad tokens, but yeah, definitely better with the new set coming out. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Um, let's cycle this Mind Stone. Play the Elephant. They might deck themselves. I guess they could just constantly crack Limboss. No, because Limboss entering would make them deck themselves. I did see that. I've been using Reckless Fire Weaver as Merkwood Bats 5 through 8, and it's a 2 drop, 1 3 that does 1 damage per artifact that enters the battlefield. Not sure which would be better yet. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. Psycho Mind Stone, Narfile, the Garthok. What? At least I know this list can withstand the entire pile of a meta deck, right? <laughs> this game, I just want it to be over. Oh shit, gain life. Damn it. All right. They have to block unless they have Gal Blast here, which is possible. Or destroy evil. I guess they have destroy evils too. Oh, cool. Okay, cool. It's over. <laughs> we got there. We outgrinded Boros Simph somehow. <laughs> cool.
Don't know how that happened, but sure. Uh, do. Think this is a mulligan. Okay, I like this hand better. I'm gonna keep this and probably bottom. It's either the Talisman or Crimson Fleet is what I'm gonna bottom. Probably Cleansing Wildfire. That's a gambler's keep. This hand? I feel like this hand's a pretty okay-ish keep. It didn't stand a chance. It didn't even stand a chance. Conmire, okay. Hand one was a gambler's keep? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't like what's going on here. I'm curious what our opponent's got going on here. Okay. It must be short on land. You know what's cool is? If they do this, we can cycle Oliphant in response. And I think I like that plan. Ooh, network terminal. Nice. Um... Play the talisman. So I'm going to assume they're going to exhume here, to which we just drop Oliphant in the grave when they do. Hand was a, uh, I think Nadir Nightblade, there is a better mono black aristocrats deck combined with bats, but if you're using food treasure or blood fire weaver, might be the better choice, as also pings for on artifact lands. This looks like reanimator. It does smell like reanimator, doesn't it? Uh, I kind of agree with you, Moose. Moose, that makes sense. That makes sense to me. The thing is, treasure sacks to itself really well. Yeah, that's true. Oh, their own witch's cottage. Oh, is this just control? This might be like a gardens build. They're not doing it. That's interesting. The problem I have with playing Crimson Fleet Commodore is that if we don't, like if we if we play it and get the monarchy and they get the troll back. Like, at, we don't have a way in our deck to kill a troll, right? It's a 6-5. We'd have to double blast it, double bolt it or something. So I don't like the idea of playing troll. <clears throat> I mean, the uh, monarchy into that. This is probably one where the monarchy comes out and we bring in, like, relics. And then maybe, like, just a stone rain just because, you know? <clears throat> also seeing what they got in hand, we could also probably take out fiery cannonades. I don't know. I'm not seeing a whole lot, so I, I don't know. <laughs> um, let's play Mindstone. Yeah, that's the question. It's like, do I just want to play Crimson Fleet Commodore or not? We could just start looting, scooting with Network Terminal every turn, which feels better than, I think, getting the Monarchy. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm just going to start looter scooting every turn with Network Terminal. This Garden's Avarak's the best card we could draw. True. Save Crimson in hand. They might play Thorn. It's also true. I think this is Mono Black Control. Well, it's, or guard. It's a Garden Shell. It's some kind of control deck is what our opponent's got going on. I'm almost positive of it.
I meant to keep that. They have chain. Yeah, this is just mono black control. Six. Let's just play the elephant. I actually don't know how we beat this deck with so much targeted removal. Like that. Yeah, I legitimately don't know how we beat this deck. Dig for Avrax, pretty much. That's what our game plan is going to be. Our problem is when they just play Troll. We don't have a way to deal with Troll. So, yeah, we just need to start getting the Avraxes. What do you side in? I don't know, dude. I, don't, I really don't know. <laughs> this is, just feels like a bad matchup. Well, let's we'll start digging a little bit here. We do have double blast for the troll. Loot the lands. Yeah. Yeah. I played the land because I knew I was going to cycle probably the other mind stone. So why not just have six mana? But yeah, we're going to start looting lands here. We're going to start looting lands and then start gaining life through talisman, but... We don't have a lot of creature output, so I just don't feel confident we're going to push through. You know what I mean? Howlbear. That's interesting. <laughs> it's not a card I was expecting. Well, I think that thing dies. Gal Blast you. Gotta love the classic Albear. I know, right? I love it, but yeah, it's like, huh? <laughs> For the deck, I gave you the only token Fireweaver misses is a copy from the Encore Cops token, but it hits eight artifacts, misses. I mean, yeah, I, I yeah, Fireweaver probably, if you're not going like mono black, Fireweaver is probably going to be better. But I'm just like, there's obviously like a mono black version now, right? That seems semi viable. Cast the elephant. <clears throat> the only thing nice is like our creatures are hasters. So in theory, like, yeah, we might be able to <laughs> punch through. I doubt it though. I doubt it. We have too small of a creature count, I think. <clears throat> That's what me thinks. Let's just yield to end step. Start saving on our time a little bit here. Nothing they have should have haste. Ooh, that's a big card. I get a sign in blood. Hey, there he is. Pump you. Come on, no snuff out. There we go. Hmm. 
And they're going to Witch's Cottage. Probably put the Ulcisaur back on top. Yep. Network Terminal so good. Seems to be, yeah. The problem here is... Sure. Boo. Problem here is Avrax doesn't punch through our opponent's stuff very well. Oh my god, then they have Corrupt. What are my dogs barking at? Problem is, these Avaraxes doesn't punch through the dinosaur very well. We're trying here. Yeah, we don't have a good sideboard for this matchup either. I might just bring in the Stone Reigns and the Relics. Because we have a lot of dead cards against them. Like, a lot of dead cards against them. Like... Fiery Cannonade doesn't do anything. I definitely don't like playing the Monarchy. So. Come on. No removal spell. Whiff. Whiff. Damn. Alright. I'm just going to scoop to that. Let's go to game two. We're not getting through that. Uh, Yeah. I don't like the Monarchy here very much. Um, Also not a big fan of Cannonade. I think Relic's fine to deal with. Uh, what's his face is. Trample is a wonderful mechanic, but harder to find in red. Is there any common big reds that have trample? Uh, apparently, the elephant. Uh, Oliphiant. Crimson Fleet Commodore does. Other than that, I don't know really any off the top of my head. So I'm not 100% sure. I'm just going to bring in all the stone rains. Why not? We'll bring them all in. We'll 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 go down a go down one mana rock. Oh, I want the draw. Well, I like the looting one. We'll go down one rock. Oliphant, <laughs> Oliphant, Elephant the elephant. Uh, yeah, this hand's okay. Wish we had an elephant, because like a turn two troll is going to be brutal. If I don't think they're going to have it, but if they had it, would have been brutal. Big red Dumbo. <laughs> yep. Yeah, this feels like probably the worst matchup. Just because we have so many main board dead cards. We don't have a lot of good sideboard hate for them. We start stone running them, though. That's going to be pretty good. I'm just going to play all the mana rocks here. I guess we could have got Slagwood Bridge down. Would have been a little bit more efficient. But <clears throat> it is what it is. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Avarax. Yep. Attack you for three. Come on, leave my little guy alone. Slagwood Bridge and Pass. We need our boarding parties. Yeah, Blast is kind of cool, though. One, two, three, four, five. Avarax again. 
We're just going to keep doing this every turn, opponent. I feel like we might as well just pump it. Monstrosity is a good one. Molten Monstrosity. Never heard of that one. It's a new one to me. Yeah, ask uh, Raging Bull. Or I don't think Darius is in this chat currently, but ask either of them too. They <laughs> they have a insane card knowledge. Well, this is going to be an easy move. Um... Galblast, the Owlbear, one, two, three, four, five. Avarax, Avarax, Pump. So yeah, if you just draw Avarax. <laughs> I would really like to draw... Would be a fan if we can draw... Uh, boarding party? Told you. <laughs> right. Gargadon is a suspend four for two mana, seven five trample. Yeah, I thought Gargadon was cool to see. Get a uh get a common. I don't know if that was already previously a common, but it was cool to see it in the set. There's the pack mate. All right, they're out of mana. One, two, one, two, three, four. They're going to make it a seven. Wait, but Gargadon is insane now? Greater, greater Gargadon is. I don't know about the new one. Alright, we need like a boarding party or something. Crag Smasher Yeti, 4 Red Red, 4 2 Mountain Cycling, 2 Backup Trample. We have like low to the ground cards too, like crash through and stuff. Still not recovered, going to have to bail and sleep. Good luck. No worries, Torvis. Thanks for hanging in for a little bit. Hope you had a good time. That card's annoying. Quit corrupting my shit. Uh, all right. Well, let's see if we can get there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I, I entered in the mana wrong. Oh, shit. Well, whatever. Yeah, entered in the mana wrong there. Uh, I like what we got. Maybe we just run it back. So, if you're doing Avrax, you gotta be careful how you click the mana. Something we learned today in our scientific experiments of Magic the Gathering. We've also learned that uh, Avarax is a constant steady stream of huge threats. That <laughs> is hard to deal with, apparently, even when you're the dot removal deck. Ooh, mulligan. Um, This hand is okay. Not like super in love with it though. I'm gonna keep this bottom Geomancer's Gambit because we don't have a land to blow up. Try it like that. I'd like to have an actual land land. 
They had the turn two exhumed troll. I'll scoop the turn two tr uh, troll. No? Okay. So we just don't have a good way to fight a turn two troll. Or foretelling a card by the pack mate. I don't like drawing our Avarax. I would rather draw a land. By the way, I will be here tomorrow at 10 a.m. Even if I'm not talking, just if you have questions, to just answer them. I'll do my best to answer quickly. Okay, yeah, no worries. Um, hold on, where was you at? Two swamps, two mountains. Okay. I just want to make sure I have the changes right. Yeah, Moist. Yeah, tomorrow we're playing the Mirkwood Bats deck. I'm pretty excited about that. Lightning Shuriken, 4 red, 5-5 five, five, flying, trample, haste, shuffle into the library, end step. That's kind of cool. That'd be a tap land, didn't it? Wish there was a thing to make that thing work. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, Hang on a second. Deck lists. Hold on, I'm just making the changes real quick to uh, to Moise's deck on the deck list here, so I have it ready, ready, Freddy for tomorrow. Um, so you're up to six swamps. Do you not have any mountains in here before? There they are. Six mountains. Okay. All right. We're back. I just want to make sure I had that squared away and fixed. <clears throat> I'm going to lightning bolt that dork. I wish we could have ramped a little bit. Well, we can start avaraxing them here. As long as I don't do like air owlbear, <laughs> that would suck. Versus Tigora, three red, four three, inner battlefield trample counter on or menace counter. That's interesting. That's a cool name, Tigorilla. Actually, I think we've talked about that card before. Sounds super familiar. That said, I'm building a control deck with Gary as a win con. I just love, let me put that in there aspect. It's like they know what's coming. <laughs> We have a discussion before, before Duress brought it up. Gotcha. I was like, the name sounds familiar and so does the effect. Yeah, tomorrow we're playing Workwood Bats combo. So I'm excited about that. I don't have it on Moto yet <clears throat> or else I kind of give you a preview of the deck list. I do put Troll back on top. Again, the troll is going to be hard for us to deal with. We top deck a land, we're going boarding party. If not, we go Avarax. Hmm. Hold on now.
We could go cleansing wildfire to build our board state even more. And then boarding party next turn. All right, I'm a fan of that. So this made me change my mind, what I was doing. They'd be like, I want to cast down his Jewel Thief, but I'm going to have to remove the Gargo Boy <laughs> in two turns. That could be fun. Oh, Gargi. I read Gargi wrong. I read it as Gary, like the... So, my bad. I say I, I'm caught up now. Okay, I'm just a little slow sometimes. All right. Yep. And they get the generous end off of too. Why can't I have those? <laughs> Why can't that be me getting those? Damn. Yeah. Why can't I hit those cascades? I never do. Um, well, let's just boarding party here. See what we find. Boarding party will hold back the annoyed Ultasar potentially, but I doubt it. Well, we can just start playing Avrax and pump it to be huge, is something we can do. I got a strong feeling we lose this one though. This just feels like a really bad matchup. Especially if they're just like on the Witch's Cottage troll cycle right now. Is it anything with three toughness weak to removal though? It is. The thing is, is we don't have a dense amount of creatures. So like they can one for one and they just, all right, that's going to be game. There's no way. Are they going to hit another... Oh no, they hit the troll because they set up the troll. All right, well, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm done here. <laughs> We're done. Only when it costs a lot. Yeah, it's uh the thing is like, yeah, it's the three three is weak to removal for sure, but when they have a lot of good like individual removal, like that's what I'm saying. Like we don't fight the individual removal very well because we don't have a dense amount of creatures. We basically have Avarex. Uh, Oliphant, Boarding Party, and Crimson Fleet Commodore. And they can one for, and we decided out the Crimson Fleet, so they can one for one us pretty well. I'm gonna keep this hand because we can cycle the Oliphant. Um Let's just go Slagwood Bridge this turn. Talking about Tiger Rilla, it's not really Oh. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I'm I'm missing the uh timing Daniel son. <laughs> I'm missing some of the conversation here. I don't really like drawing these Avaraxes very much. Um but yeah. That feels like a rough matchup. And that game three, we didn't get really off the ground very quick. I feel like in that matchup, we need to like fire off Avarax's turn after turn after turn ahead of curve. And we never got ahead of curve because we didn't find a indestructible land or like a ramp kind of thing. And we also found our third land as a tap land. So definitely like definitely some variance too there. It feels like probably a bad matchup to begin with, but probably some variance too. I'm just going to cycle this other elephant why not
Uh, yeah, I think this is Jeskai Affinity. I think this is probably Teasdale's Jeskai Affinity. Which, don't know how we do against that, to be honest with you. I'm live game the instep. Yes, Alex. I'm very bad about that. You're 100% right. <sighs> Come on. And to get the bar batter fist off of it, too. Gross. So the question is, do we want to Avarax here? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, why not? Why the hell not? We'll just keep up the stream of pressure. Probably just boarding party. Um, this next turn. Don't know if they run counter magic or not, but we're just gonna do it anyway. <laughs> Glenn Hawk, sure. Obviously, if we hit our monarchy, that would kind of suck. Okay. Nope. Made this a lot better of a play now. Um, one, two, three, two, three. Just cannonade. Pristine Prism, Pristine Talisman, I mean, pass. Yeah, just clean up the board a little bit. We'll go boarding party next turn. Might have been an argument for just boarding party there, then Fiery Cannonade next turn, but is what it is, right? It is what it is. Mm, quit playing Core Sky Fisher. Get the Bar Batter Fist back again. Sure. Speaking of Infinity, Esper, Jeskai Affinity, and Zero Drop decks are going to be good when Commander Masters drops, probably. Two, three, four, five, six... Get a lightning bolt. Cool. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I think Commander. Honestly, like, I don't know what y'all's opinion are, but I think Commander Masters is really going to shake up the format. Ugh, turning nowhere. Quit interacting with my stuff. Just let me do my thing, and you just not interact. Uh, obviously, Cast and Fire comes in. That's probably it. They do not run counters if the opponent's running it. He added it. It runs Gal Blast, Journey, and Munitions. Yeah, it looks like Journey to Nowhere for sure. And they have the Mirror Enforcer. Gross. So what's Blue ran for then? Just like Kenku and Thoughtcast? I can't remember what the list is like off the top of my head. I don't remember. Cyan zips dust to dust, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. That's what I kind of thought makes sense. I'm just going to boarding party again. One, two, three, four, five, 
six. Okay. I just want to make sure I can play this Mind Stone too. It all seemingly requires thought casts. But yeah, I'd presume. I don't know. Goodbye, Mirror Enforcer. Blue side blast. Blue blast. Uh, oh, yeah. Four blue blasts on the side. Yeah. They might have rebuke on the sideboard, too. I'm a huge fan of graveyard based decks and white, art white artifacts, and I think the best slash most influential cards got downshifted is the four drop board wipe that deals three damage to all creatures. I didn't see a four drop board wipe that deals three damage to every creature. I saw the three drop that deals neg that's negative two, negative two, and then scries. But I don't remember seeing a four drop that deals three damage to all creatures. Serious sideboard, I've got dust to dust, four dust to dust, four revoke existence, four also running four gorilla shaman and three smash to dust. <laughs> yeah, all the affinity hate, just all of it. I mean, honestly, with how much of like artifacts are running around, you could just literally put 15 card sideboard into artifacts and that would be fine. You would hit like more than half the format. <laughs> Yeah, I actually think Tortured Existence is 100% going to be playable um, now because of, like, Dread Return and stuff. So, I'm excited. Quit casting stuff. Jesus Christ. There's the makeshift munitions. Sure. Um, huh. This is in red. It's Sulfurous Blast. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. Gosh, you're just main board artifact hate in general. Think of all the artifact lands, not an artifact finny deck place. Yeah, I know, right? Um, one, two, three, four, five. Let's play Avarax. Get an Avarax. Attack for nine. I'm not going to pump this Avarax because I think I'm just going to Cleansing Wildfire here. McFlash, do you want to play a game after, or is it your last? Uh, if this game can wrap up pretty quick, I'll play you. It just I'll have to see what time it is after this match ends up. I did not respect the Avarax. We drew a land off that, really? <laughs> so yeah, Pigeon, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, I'll let you know after this match ends. With it being 11.30, I'm going to say probably not since we're in game one. But 100% play you tomorrow, Pigeon, if we can't do it today. So I'll let you know after this one ends up. Instant speed 2 damage is used as an instant speed 3 is used in your main. Gas fire is gonna be a two of staple. True. Our opponent has like the most obnoxious board state <laughs> for us <laughs> for what we're doing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
We can double Avarax next turn, though, which is really cool. Which is what my current plan is, is to just d double Avarax here unless we top deck, like, a boarding party. Three, four, five, Avarax. Avarax. I guess they're going to sack something to makeshift munitions. Yep. Now, can we top deck? Uh, preferably another boarding party. I've only gotten one boarding party so far. I get a Glint Hawk. Sun Chaser is kind of cool. I don't think we're going to win this one. We really need like a really solid top deck to get there. I'm rocking with them Sun Chasers. Yeah, it's a sweet card. It's a really sweet card. Yeah, not really what I was thinking of when I was like, cards we need to be really good right now. Let's just crack this Mind Stone, just see what we get. Hmm, that's interesting. Problem is we can't win through Limboss. Always cry when I encounter an artifact hate playing Boros, my baby Boros, right? I always feel that way when I play Tortex, Torex, and uh, run into great mainboard graveyard hate. It's like, get the fuck out of here. See, they're at five, right? But the thing is, they can crack. They have six basically gain life on board. So if I send Galblast to the face, it really doesn't matter because of Limboss. I think it's probably better if we just try to keep Avrax on board. Damn, I was hoping they'd crack down, tap down a limb boss. Because the thing with this fiery cannonade is like this makeshift munitions, they can just pop it off and kill our, our baby boy pretty easily. Well, we're just going to do it. Do 
feels like to me the only way to combat artifact hate is to play blue with counter spells. True. Need Dark Seal Citadel equivalent of this card cannot be exiled, right? <laughs> There's so much artifacts running around in this format. That's kind of crazy. <sighs> Mirror Enforcer probably just sealed our fate. Well, let's try it. Boom, here comes the boarding party. We're out of Avaraxes. Odin Munitions was the Fate Sealer? Yeah, I think so. No, the Mirror Enforcer, I think, is. It's a harder card for us to like punch through. Lightning Bolt. I'm going to Lightning Bolt this bird here. Way to be Artifact Hades is a meta call. Play non-artifact decks and, si and sideboard some main deck cards is dead. True. I when I, I ran a League of Affinity. I ran and... Uh, well, well, I don't know. I'm stumbling over my words here. The point is, it felt like every deck I played literally just played a sideboard of Artifact Hate. It was like the full 15 was just to beat Affinity. It was crazy. Where did Mirror Enforcer go? What just happened? That was weird. Anyone else notice that? Like, just disappeared from the board? Yeah, sure. Gonna sack the lands, sure. I don't think we win this. I don't think it's even gonna be close. I'm just gonna play the Cl Cl Crimson Fleet Commodore because we have nothing else to do. I know they can just steal it, but what else are we gonna do, right? We don't have anything else to do. What deck, in your opinion, beat Affinity without Artifact Hate? Like, what matchups well versus Affinity? If you don't have Artifact Hate, I don't know. <laughs> um, I had good luck against Affinity a lot when I was playing um, uh, Jund Wildfire. I had a pretty good matchup against Affinity with that. You didn't really have any artifact hate until the sideboard um but like you had some good main deck stuff like you just had a good reaction i guess terror would be pretty good too monstertron's not bad you don't have a lot of artifact hate in that deck but you have fingrin marauder so it's really good against any deck running really affinite like any kind of uh artifacts burn yeah burn could be fine too So yeah, there's definitely plays to be had. Decks to be had. Still don't like the monarchy. 
Still not a fan of the monarchy. Like, I just don't like defending the monarchy. It's not like what I... I don't like to do it. All right. Uh, cast into fires. Yup. Crimson Fleet out. Do we have anything Stone Raid is going to be good against? Probably not. Let's leave it like that. Black Terror, Non Kodaltha Burn, Call Gates. Yeah, all those could be pretty good. Uh, I've had good luck in the past with Tortex, Torex against them too. Follow, just avoid the hate by being the hate. <laughs> exactly. Multifunctional artifact hate main board like cast in the fire. And OFC I smashed them with Persist Blade, but the but this deck is just top one. We are just waiting for the world to realize. Yeah, the Persist Blade. I need to run run that. I need to run the mutate persist again. Either that or the Undying Mutate, one of the two. On a different side note, when is the needed ban coming for Infemory? So beyond Obnoxious and Popper in general. Probably sometime after Commander Masters, there will probably be another ban. We'll see what happens. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, but yeah, we'll see. The data doesn't agree with you, Joel. I, I don't care what the data says. I agree with Joel. Fucking Infemorate. Way too often and too many decks use Ephemerate. Honestly, I'm on Joel's side. I hate Ephemerate. That's my number one, like, tilt cart. Fuck Ephemerate. Get banned. Ban in every format. <laughs> Bolting their Ephemerate just feels so good, though. It is true. When you screw up their Ephemerate plan, but... Yeah, I, I hate Ephemerate. But yeah, I would say sometime after Commander Masters, we'll see how it shakes up the format. Yes, sir, just play red. <laughs> Christ and green. <laughs> Burn Infinity are top decks. They both don't play it. I am curious to see how Commander Master shakes out the format, though. I think it could shake it out in a pretty interesting way. Green tears dropping. My tears don't fall. They crash around me. Top six decks don't play it. Jessica is the first deck in at number seven. Why would you even consider banning a card that's not top decks? Because it's annoying. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> it's not a fun card. I personally, I will admit that I personally don't care about the data on it. I just find it annoying. This hand is meh. I'll keep it. I personally find the deck super annoying. I mean, the card super annoying, so ban it. But outside of that, like in reality, like if you take away my personal bias toward it, it probably is fine to keep in the format. But I say ban it because I su I find it annoying. We'll boil down to the we'll boil down to the thing that uh, really comes into question when you talk about banning cards is like is what what is it actually. Like, what does it actually do in the meta versus your own personal biases? Like, I find the card annoying and unfun, so I want it gone. The baby in me wants the Ephemerate gone. But if someone was like, we're not banning Ephemerate because it's not played very much. It's not, like, super impactful to the meta state. It's not. You know what I mean? I'd be like, fine. You know what I mean? So, there's definitely... Um, there's definitely reason there. I'm a, I'm on Joel's side. I despise Infimerate. If it got banned, I'd just be like, cool. But I'm also, I'm not a fan of a lot of cards. This is me personally. When it comes to the, the power in the game and stuff like that, I don't like a lot of cards that do a lot of things in one card. 
So for me, Infemrate would be fine if you got rid of Rebound. Ragavan, the Nimble Pifler, would be fine if you got rid of either Dash or the Treasure Token, right? There's there's a lot of cards in this game that if you could just remove one of the abilities, I would I would feel a lot better about it being in the game. Does that make any sense? But that's my own personal bias -y. I just don't like cards of that power level, I guess, but... It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. So, obviously, to make a band decision, you need to look at the meta, how it affects the meta health. Me personally, uh, my, the baby side of me is ban it. It's annoying. <laughs> Agree, Pascal. It has the potential to break the format at every new set. True. I like playing Gruel and Naya, so Green doesn't feel left out. I feel that bull. I feel that. Little Pascal is one hundred percent correct. You don't ban something without a good reason. Rebound. <laughs> it's ephemerate. That's that's your reason, bull. It's ephemerate. Um, there is worse cards at the moment, but let's not leave ephemerate unchecked for too long. That's all true. Ephemerate is another gatekeeper card, like Lotus talks about. It filters out decks which don't belong in top tier. Yeah, it's true. Personally, I like cards that do too many things on them on their selves. I prefer to assemble pieces than building around a card. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind cards that, like, do powerful things and you build around the card to be, like, this is my, like, engine piece. But I'm also, like... <sighs> I don't know. I like a... I, me, personally, in this kind of game, I like a lower power level. If that makes any sense. I like, that's one reason why I like like drafts too. I just don't do a lot of them. But yeah, there's, I, when it comes to like this kind of game itself, magic itself, I like the, uh, I like lower power levels. If that makes any sense. To me, it's a funner game that way. But I mean, it could be fun too doing wickedly powerful stuff. But I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know if we're going to get the play here. I don't know what's going on with our opponent. Yeah, like Torex is centerpiece and the glue, where Synth is a bird bounce engine put together with twigs and sticks. Yeah, stuff like that. Like, I like that kind of stuff better than, like, I don't know. I just, to me, Ephemerate's one of those cards that just has too many words on it. You know what I mean? But eternal debate anyway, but... Yeah, feel you. Yeah, it's like just it's just a it's just gonna be a talking point every time. Lotus, I'm the opposite. I build good stuff decks. The cards are powerful in isolation, like Jund doesn't mean that it's way to do it, just how my mind works. I feel that Lotus. Like I like just good, you know, good card piles too. Like I'm a big fan of Jund as well. Um I'm assuming our opponent timed out is what I'm assuming. Like they just up and disappeared on me is what I'm assuming here. Lotus is the reason I never leave a lightning bolt in the drawer. <laughs> it's always on the table. Bolt good. Bolt good. Good. Bolt very good. And it's simple. Simple. I was I was blinking my mall drifter. Did I miss anything? <laughs> you get out of this chat. Um. No, we're we're just sitting here. I don't know what the deal is. Bolt go, go burr, bird engine go burr, yeah. Yeah, I think that's why I like Monster Tron. Monster Tron is kind of a simple deck too. You just play big creatures and attack. I think for me, I just really like dis, uh, dislike combo and the game type of decks or concepts. And with Ephemerate, it seems like this is what it's used for is endless combos. Yeah, I'm not a big combo player either, Joel. Um, I do like in like... 
modernish. Like I do kind of like I, I you can kind of call Dredge a small combo deck. Um and I do like the Yogmoth combo quite a bit, but I like more creature based combos that so like you sacrifice creatures and you know stuff like that. I like the Ultratron. Um I don't know if I really like Alter Ultratron, but I like the Hamburger Tron a lot with the cat. That's a kind of a fun combo. Like there's definitely combos out there I like. But yeah, when it comes to like I don't like familiars, that's not really like my play style. I'm not that interested in it, you know, kind of stuff like that. I may not be too familiar with those who like combos. Blast and Stonehorn Dignitary. Or like reanimator combos. Could be fun too. Stonehorn Dignitary though is just obnoxious. <laughs> Cast down good, jewel teeth good, land of war visionary good, vampire sovereign good. Yes, all good, good, good. I don't know what our opponent's doing here. I'm just gonna do the outro, I guess. Um let's talk about this deck. We probably went in reality one and two. Uh but then fun people strongly dislike the fun I would have but with Bant Hexproof. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing with magic. Everybody dislikes and likes something different. Um uh, but yeah, let's talk about this deck because I just don't think this game's gonna happen. Uh, and I'm going to have to go. So sorry, Pigeon. Uh, tomorrow, me and you will hit up and play some games if you're free. Um, but I'm not going to be able to today. Unfortunately, this last game took a long time. Let's talk about the deck. I like a lot what's going on here. Um, Avrax is really, really good. I like Avrax a lot. It's a super fun card. Boarding party's good. The elephant's good. Um, I'm just... Me, personally, I'm not a fan of the Monarchy. I don't like having to defend it. It's a reason why I kind of lean toward decks that don't play the Monarchy or don't play the Initiate, because I don't like having to defend that stuff. I like just playing cards and not worrying about it, I guess. And I don't feel like I play around defending it very well at all, <laughs> personally. Um, but the rest of the deck's pretty good. I like Cleansing Wildfire is awesome. Geomancer's Gambit. Like, There's a lot of good stuff here. My two problems that I feel like I ran into with the deck is if you don't have a way to accelerate your mana, you're kind of in a bad spot. Avarax is a really bad turn five. It's really good turn four. Like, really good as a turn four. But as a turn five, I don't know how I feel about it. Because it is just a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, it has haste. Yeah, you can fetch it up. That's why it's cool. But... Yeah, I don't, it's like, if you don't have that accelerant, it kind of, the deck kind of meanders a bit. It does have some staying power. Obviously, you know, we outgrinded Boros Synth at one point between Mindstone and the Network Terminal. Like, you can definitely dig for a lot of stuff. Cleansing Wildfire, Geomancer, Gambit allows you to draw for stuff. Fiery Cannon Age, just an awesome board wiper. Pristine Talisman keeps your life up. Gal Blast Bolt kind of helps deal with the board. Like, there's a lot of really good stuff here. Um... I just feel like me personally, and David, if you're watching this, you would know better than I would. I feel like if you don't have some kind of mana acceleration, you probably want a mulligan, right? Like you probably want to have a cleansing wildfire, a geomancer's gambit, or one of your mana rocks. And you want to hit those on curve or the deck really just kind of fumbles. And then you need to close the game out really quick because if you don't, it feels like you kind of f flutter out. We kind of saw that with the affinity matchup and the uh, gardens matchup where if we can't close that game out quick, our opponents out of the matches we played against every match, our opponent can out card advantage us for the most part. And um, we can't deal with much of a board state really at all. Uh, we can deal with smaller creatures, but we can't deal with big creatures like really whatsoever. And then when I would sideboard out Crimson Fleet Commodore, we're bringing in cards that in theory should be good for the matchup. Okay. Uh, but just, yeah, I don't know. Like, I feel like you really got to get that down and go. If you can like turn four Avarax and just keep doing that every turn while building your mana, like that's really strong. And it felt awesome. Like, Avrax is really cool. I like this card a lot. I like it a lot, a lot. Uh, boarding Party's good when you can hit it. <laughs> I always feel like I have a hard time finding it. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff here I really, really like. Um, 
I just feel like, like, yeah, if you don't get that hot start, like if you can't like turn four and have racks, you're kind of in a, in a little bit of a rough shape. So we're trying there. Um, thank you for the stream. No worries. It's been a fun stream. Thank you guys for saying that. I'm, I'm glad you guys appreciate the streams. Thank you to all commentators and streamers. I really appreciate the interaction. Yeah, Joel, for sure. I enjoy chatting with y'all and hanging out. Um, but I like this deck a lot. Uh, I think it's sweet. I think Avarax is really, really cool. Uh, when I played against David, he flattened me with this deck. <laughs> Just outright flattened me with it. Um, <clears throat> it can do some crazy powerful stuff. And like I said, Avrax is just a wickedly cool card. I like this card a lot. So thank you, David, uh, for the deck list. This deck is super cool. Uh, I would not mind playing it again. <clears throat> if you get like a Tron version, I'm curious about that too. So just let me know on that one. But yeah, I like it. Me personally, I would probably just swap out Crimson Fleet for something else. But that's just because I don't like fighting the Monarchy. Otherwise, I don't think there's really... I don't think there's much other like deck changes to make. I think it's fine the way it is. Like you just kind of want that hand where you can start mana ramping on curve, you know? Otherwise it's it's good. So uh but that's where I'm gonna bounce for today. Thank you all for hanging out. If you want to support the channel, you can consider becoming a member. 99 cents a month gets you access to our community Discord server where decks like this came from and was voted on to be played. You can also see the litany of deck lists in there. It's a lot of cool stuff going on over there. Also, it gets you uh, custom emotes, gets your name turned green, a little badge next to your name, and your name at the beginning of the end of stream you'll see in a second. If you want to support the channel for free, best way to do so is just by subscribing, liking, sharing, and commenting. All that goes a long way to helping the channel out as well. Uh, and I will see you all tomorrow with Merkwood Bats Combo. So I'm excited about that one. As a heads up, just to let y'all know, next week, for the entire week, I will not be streaming. Uh, there will be no streams at all, all next week. I have videos lined up to be uploaded, so I'll have content up. Uh, I will be still in the Discord. Um, but as for streams, there will be no streams next week. So just throwing that out there as a heads up. And uh, hopefully I'll catch y'all tomorrow. So everybody have a wonderful rest of your day. Happy Monday, and I'll catch y'all tomorrow. So, bye.